Hello, I'm Robin Worley. Welcome to Lenscraft. Today, we're taking a look at how to soft proof in Lightroom. Now, if you've ever tried to print any of your own images, you may have run across problems when the print doesn't look like the screen. One of the ways to fix this is through soft proofing, but there's a lot of misinformation around there. And actually, there's three common myths that we're going to look at today and dispel. And I'm going to show you how to soft proof properly using Lightroom. For this example, I've actually come to use an old version of Lightroom. So I'm looking at Adobe Lightroom 5. A couple of reasons for doing this. One is that a lot of you out there are still on older versions. And I want to show you, you can actually soft proof properly using these older versions. The other one I'm actually going to save for the end of this video. And I'll explain why I've chosen to go back to Lightroom 5. So in this example, I'm going to use an image here that I've already selected. And at the moment, I'm in the library mode in Lightroom. If I'm going to soft proof, I need to do it in the develop module. Now, that confuses a lot of people because although soft proofing is to do with printing, you actually need to go into develop. And the reason for that is because soft proofing is about fixing your photo ready for print. So the first myth I want to dispel is the fact that soft proofing isn't just a one click change. It's not something you do and then it's done. It's actually a process of preparing an image ready for print. Let's have a look now at the image. Here you can see it. And one of the things I like to change is the background color here. At the moment, it's gray and I'm going to change that to white. And the reason I want to change it to white is because I print to white paper. So having a white background is going to look much more like the print once it's mounted. Now, if your version of Lightroom supports soft proofing, you're going to see an option down here that says soft proof. Now, at the moment, mine isn't showing up. And the reason for that is because I've not turned the option on down here. Now that I have my soft proofing option down here, I can click that and I'm now in soft proofing mode. Now you'll notice when I did that, that the background to the image turned to gray. And that's because you now have many more options here around how you want that background to look. So I'm actually going to choose paper white because this simulates the white of a piece of paper. The other thing you'll notice is that my histogram expanded here to offer some soft proofing options. When you're soft proofing, the first thing to realize is that you're actually going to have to adjust your image to prepare it for print. And that means getting it right. So rather than adjust the original image, what we're going to do is create a soft proof copy or a proof copy. And that basically creates a virtual copy of my image. It duplicates it. If I look down here, you can see we've got a virtual copy and you can tell it's a virtual copy because the corner is turned over. So I'm just hide that again. We're now in the proofing mode. This is where the next myth comes in. You need to select the right printer profile for the paper that you're going to be printing to in combination with your printer. So I print using an Epson Pro 3880. And if I'm printing to archival matte paper, you can see here it's one of the options. If I'm going to use that printer with, say, some uh, oyster paper, I need to switch to that paper. I'm going to show you, I'm going to carry on now with the archival matte because I use that quite a lot. If I didn't see the correct profile for the 3880, I can't go off and use a different Epson printer. It just will produce the wrong result. Equally, if you don't have the right paper profile, you're going to get the wrong result as well. The image you see on screen needs to match the printer and paper combination you're using, and that's done through the profile. So it's no good using a different profile. In a later video, I'm actually going to show you how to get some of these profiles and where you can install them on your computer. But for the moment, let's assume you've got the right profile that you want. Now, the next option that you've got is this intent. And this is how colors are handled in the image. And you can either have perceptual or relative. And actually, it does make a difference. The difference here with this image is quite minor, but it's mainly to the blues. As I'm switching between them, you'll see that one blue is more aqua, whereas the other blue is more a navy blue. And you can also see my histogram up here changing as I switch between the two. When you come to print later, you'll have to make sure you make that selection again. 
So I'm going to choose relative. We won't bother with perceptual because I like the blue that the relative creates. Now, the other option you've got on here is simulate paper and ink. Now, when I click that, you'll notice that the image goes quite dull. And what's happening is the computer or Lightroom is simulating the effect of applying ink onto a matte paper. Now, a lot of people don't use this simulate paper and ink because they think that it's made the image look bad. Actually, what it's done is it's made the image look like the printed version will appear. It hasn't changed anything. All it's done is simulated the effect of printing. Now, at this point, I want to show you how I go about soft proofing. So I've made my proof copy. I've selected my profile. I've selected my rendering intent. And I've also clicked simulate paper and ink. I'm now going to come down here and use a side by side preview. Now, what I'm seeing over on the left is the original image that I'd prepared. On the right, what I'm seeing is the soft proof copy. And the soft proof doesn't look quite like the original print. It actually lacks a bit of contrast. It lacks a bit of saturation. Now, before I print it, my job is to make this image on the right look like the one on the left. And if I can do that, I will actually create a good soft proof that when printed is going to look like the original. And that's the third myth. People think just by having clicked the option to soft proof that it makes their image somehow look like or appear on paper as it does on screen. It doesn't. You have to make changes to the image. So in this instance, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to add in some contrast because I can see contrast is lacking. I'm going to increase the saturation very slightly. And I'm also going to cool the image very slightly because it doesn't appear quite as blue. The other thing you often find when you're printing an image is that you lose the clarity. So I'm now going to add some clarity back in. The print version now is looking quite near to the original image. I'm happy with that. I'm now able to go and print the soft proof copy in the print module quite successfully and have it appear just as I'm seeing it on screen now. So that's the image as it would appear. I'm quite happy with that. I can go and print it. So just to recap, soft proofing isn't a one click change. You can't just click the soft proof option down at the bottom left and your image will come out right. You have to make changes. You have to use the right profile for your printer and paper combination that you're going to be using. And the final thing is, once you've clicked the soft proofing options, you have to make changes and adjust your soft proof. If you don't do that, the image is never going to match the original. Now, at the start of this video, I said that I was using Lightroom 5 and there was two reasons for that. This is the second reason. I've now switched to the Lightroom Classic CC, which is version 2017.1. And this has just been released in January of 2018. At the moment, I've got the same image up on screen. I've got it in soft proof mode and I'm comparing the master image on the left with the proof copy on the right. What was happening before in the earlier versions of Lightroom is that when I click this simulate paper and ink option, it would create a difference in the image that would simulate the fact that I've put ink to a matte paper. Now, in this version, it's not happening. And I don't know why. When I find out, I'm going to actually post something on one of my blogs or I may publish something else onto YouTube. But there definitely seems to be a problem here. And I can't seem to find out anything about it either. So it, it's happened relatively recently because I print all the time and it's not something I've seen before. If you watch the histogram, I'm still getting the change when I switch between the perceptual and the relative, but I'm not getting any change at all when I click the simulate paper and ink. So something's definitely different around the way soft proofing's working in the latest version. Hopefully I'll get to the bottom of that soon. I'll be able to publish something and share it with you. I'm Robin Worley. You've been watching Lenscraft. See you soon. Thank you.